I was going to say, uh, when Wally was talking about uh, the writers, uh, I agree with a lot of that, but sometimes some of us cartoonists would create a character, just make a doodle, and uh, it would, it, then Joe would get the writers together and do, would develop it. Can you give us an example of that, where you doodled something? Uh, Peter Potamus. Okay. Uh, I think Ruby Spears kind of did that, didn't they, by creating characters? And, uh, yeah, okay. Let's expand on that. You saw in that film, one of the film editors was a man named Ken Spears, who later went out to be part of the Ruby Spears studio, and let's where Jerry worked for a while. Jerry worked on uh, when Ruby Spears was produced, he was the producer of Plastic Man and Fang Face and Thunder of the Barbarian oh. and uh, quite a few shows for them. Well, Fang Face was a character that I created because uh, we were developing an idea with Wolfman Jack, the uh, disc jockey, and uh, nothing really developed, but uh, I was looking for some photographs of Wolfman. I had to make some caricatures of him. And I saw one photo at the store. Uh, he was kneeling down with his arm on the back of a stuffed wolf. And I thought, hey, why don't we put a wolf dog there? You know, a werewolf in the show. So uh, I designed something, and we ended up, we didn't do anything with Wolfman, but we took my uh, design of uh, this werewolf, and it became Fangface. I don't remember who came up with the name. Okay. Did anybody see Fang Face? <laughs> <laughs> there was never a Hanna Barbera show that didn't have a dog in it or a wolf. That's right. Yes. <laughs> did you give him a left hook? Anyway, so but tell us about tell us about, about how much uh, how much time during the day did you spend actually drawing when you were there, and how much did you spend flirting with secretaries? <laughs> well, I was lucky. I could draw very fast, so it gave me a lot of extra time for <laughs> secretaries and lunches and stuff like that. Why don't you t ask somebody who'll tell the truth? <laughs> <laughs> now tell us about Joe and Bill. Let's, let's talk about how were they to work for? Oh, well, I worked mostly for Joe because he handled our, the layout department was, and the writers were his department. And, uh, oh, he was, he was great. He was quite an inspiration. Uh, he, he was a very charming man. He was a very, very good charming. talker. Um, there's a famous story. Joe Barbera went in to pitch a show at the network. And he had all these different ideas. He's pitching on this show and this idea and this idea and this idea and this idea. And he had an agent who would go with him um, all the time. Cy Fisher? Cy Fisher. And Cy Fisher would just sit there and giggle at whatever Joe pitched. And <laughs> that was a, a good agent just sits there and laughs. And finally the network says, okay, we'll buy two hours. This is a great, we'll buy it. And they walked out of the office and Joe turned to Cy and said, which of the ideas did they buy? And Cy said, I don't know. <laughs> and, and, she, and so Joe said, we should go back in and find out what they bought. And Cy said, no, no, we signed the contract. Then we go back in and find out what we sold them. <laughs> so the next day, Cy Fisher gets a call from the network people. They said, oh, we're going to honor the commitment, but we're not sure what we committed to. Uh, <laughs> what, what were the shows that we, we did? And they didn't know. They, nobody, nobody knew what they bought. Joe had actually sold nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so uh, the, for, for those who don't understand, explain how, what Joe did and what Bill did. How they divided up the workload. Well, like Wally said, Bill pretty much ran the studio um, as far as the camera department, the animators, ink and paint. Uh, Joe, uh, he, ran, he, was, uh, he ran the creative side of the studio. He hired and fired the writers. Right. It would start with uh, development. Uh, that would last about six months, and then after he sold some shows, we'd go into production for six months and back to development. Okay, and your role during most of this time was design, layout. Tell me, tell me what you did. Well, I... What, what, did, you, what did you do all day to justify this salary of yours? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I used to tell Joe how great he was. No, no, no. No, I was a layout man for a number of years, and uh, also character design was my specialty. And, of course, uh, I should mention Iwo Takamoto, who is no longer with us. He and I designed quite a lot of characters for Hanna Barbera. And uh, I left just before you came in. I, I left in '75 to help Ruby Spears start their studio. And I worked for Ruby Spears. And you worked for, you worked for, for Hanna Barbera. Yes. That's what. We yeah. Had. That's right. Anyway, and I, the first time I ever I, I mentioned, you couldn't believe I knew who your father was. 
You didn't or did you? You didn't. I knew, and you didn't know that. You were surprised. I knew who he was. And Jerry was the fastest artist I ever saw at drawing things. He would, he would like wait if they needed the drawing at two o'clock. He would start it at one fifty-eight, <laughs> and it would be done early. <laughs> I was lucky. What was your favorite show? What were your favorite shows to work on in Hanna Barbera? Well, doing layouts and design for the Jetsons. I think that was my number one favorite. And, and I like the shorts until we stopped doing those. One of the things you worked on that I liked tremendously was a movie called Hey There, It's Yogi Bear. Oh, yeah. Which you designed a lot of. Yeah. Ewo and I uh, worked on a, Joe put us on a song sequence. I think it was called the St. Louis Bears or something. Yeah. And we had a lot of fun with that. Tony, what was your favorite show to work on? Jetson is my thought. Okay, we seem to have a consensus building here. It was great sitting around just thinking what the future would be like. And we had Skype, <laughs> wireless communication, flat panel, big screens, and a lot of stuff that they haven't caught up with us yet. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when we were developing the Jetsons, Tony, it was ni this was 1962, and Tony brought in a book. The title was 1975, and it just had all kinds of predictions and stuff in it. That was it's, I finally found a copy of that a few years ago. Well, Wally, let me name let me name some actors that you directed. Tell me if any of these spark any memories for you. Okay, you worked with four of the people up here. Um, I gave uh, Greg Berger his first gig uh, for Deep Productions and hired him to pay, play a, a gentle character. And then I uh, I cast him again in what was the the, uh, the Transformer character? The Grimlock. Huh? Grimlock. Grimlock. Yeah, the Grimlock. Yeah. I did voices once for a while. I did the Buddy Graph in Chicago for an advertiser who had a guy wandering around in a bear's or rather in a bunny suit and at the navel there was a lens that stuck out. The kids didn't know they were being photographed. So I came up with a voice like this for the Buddy Graph and I don't think it's very bad. This is the first one I ever did. <laughs> Can I have a hand for the Buddy Graph? <laughs>